Good morning and welcome to Christ Church Cathedral on this second Sunday of Easter. Our worship this morning from our many places yet together will be the Holy Eucharist right to for the first portion of that service. If you're following along in your prayer book, our worship today begins on page 355. If you have received our email, then you will also have an emailed electronic version of today's worship booklet. We begin with the Easter acclamation. Alleluia, the Lord is risen.
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the lessons from Scripture. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of powers, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according by the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, and because it was impossible for him to be held in its power, for David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us today. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith and the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. 
A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is now our fifth Sunday to be apart, worshiping together, but via live stream technology, for which we are greatly thankful. What at the outset, seems to be a temporary inconvenience and an adaptation that we struggled rather quickly to make has now become our new life. As we have followed developments around the coronavirus in our country and around the world and the accompanying economic hardship, we have experienced, or at least I know I have, daily fluctuations of emotions and outlook. Moments of calm and confidence alternate with periods of uncertainty and anxiety. And this would seem to be the new normal that is our life as we approach one month of having lived in relative isolation and what we are now calling social distancing which remains, at the present time, our only effective means of staying the spread of the virus. And so for that reason, we are happy to do it. We give thanks and remember in our prayers those workers in health care and other essential services who continue to risk their lives for the support and well-being of others. We remember also those who, due to hardship, have no choice but to expose themselves to potential harm. Last Sunday, we celebrated the day of the resurrection, the Easter day. And thank you all for your wonderful pictures that you've shared with us, and we're trying now to share them back with you more widely, and for the many expressions of joy and hope that you have given to me and to each other. These help us stay connected over the distance right now. So thank you, and please keep it up. That resurrection experience is Peter's subject in his Pentecost sermon, which is what we heard in our lesson from Acts today. In it, he uses the words of David's Psalm 16. And Peter proclaims Jesus' resurrection as the fulfillment of the promise that God made that he would never abandon his loved ones to separation in the kingdom of death. Of all that we are witnesses, Peter claimed. Drawing heavily on the psalm itself, Peter reminded his listeners that God upholds our lot. God gives us counsel. God is always at our right hand. And because of this, in the words of David, my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You, Lord, show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. This is not to say, however, that suffering 
is not and will not continue to be part of this new life. Our reading from the first letter of Peter makes that clear. Through the resurrection of Christ from the dead, we have been given a new hope, an inheritance that is imperishable and unfading. The resurrection, Peter writes, is the foundation of Christian hope. It shows what God intends for the life of every person. That inheritance that Peter speaks of is the forward-looking character of Christian life. Always our posture is looking forward for what is yet to come while living faithfully in that which is. And while not looking back with longing, remembering God's faithfulness to his promises. And Peter is clear that the what is of present reality does and will continue to involve suffering. Suffering, he writes, is testing and refining fire. It cannot, it, it cannot destroy the genuineness of your faith. And remember that your faith is not your own. You don't make it. You didn't get it. It is a gift to you from God, received in your baptism, and it is yours to nurture and to grow or not according to your own obedience and practice. Peter reminds us, although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving, you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Even in the midst of the suffering that life must inevitably bring, even in this present uncertainty and anxiety, you are already receiving the new life that God has given to you. This is it. So what will our new life be? Together here at Christ Church Cathedral, what is our new life and what is it going to be? Our gospel lesson from John today is the original ending in that book of its account of Jesus' life. It's what is called in classical terms, the colophon. Colophon, you want me to spell it for you since you've probably got a pen and paper, I know it's C-O-L-O-P-H-O-N. And now that's a word that we use to refer to something at the beginning of a book. It's the printer's sign or emblem. And it says something about where the book came from or about the origin of the story. But in ancient times, it often came at the end, and the writer himself would put it there. John writes this as his colophon. The things written in this book have been given so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The whole purpose of John's whole gospel is that you may believe in Jesus and beyond that to have life, this new life in his name. The scene that is recounted in this gospel reading today encompasses Jesus' appearing to his disciples on the evening of the day of his resurrection. And subsequently he appears to the reluctant Thomas, offering him the physical proof that he demanded. The element of this first and primary post-resurrection event that I would draw your attention to is Jesus' breath. After he says, peace be with you, and shows his hands and his side, Jesus sends them as the Father sent him, and he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. 
In that moment, Jesus reenacts the original creation of life from the second chapter of Genesis, when God moved over the waters of chaos and breathed and created life with his breath. Jesus here creates the new life of the Spirit by breathing on his disciples. He creates in that moment the life of the church, which we continue to share. The mission that he gave to them and that he gives to us now is this, forgiveness and reconciliation. In all our being and doing, our purpose is to strive to heal the wounds and the breaches that disturb the peaceful unity between God and all people, between all of God's people and all of creation. We are given life in his name. We are given his breath and his spirit in order to do those things. So what will our new life be? What will we do with this new life that we're living now? Most days I read Richard Rohr's daily meditation and I read his meditation this morning. And in it he noted that he once wrote, somewhat facetiously, that the church should close all of its programs for a year and teach people to pray. And it seems that now unintentionally we have come to that opportunity, although we hope it doesn't last a year. As the process of our re-entry into life in which we can gather together in the body now appears that it will be long and slow. Perhaps the best way of taking up our new life is above all to commit ourselves to the practice of prayer. I would remind you that this is not a passive practice. It is active and it bears fruit both in the short term and in the long term. We will continue to send out from here at Christ Church for the time being daily readings and prayers for you to use in your worship at home. We will continue to live stream as much worship as we are able to keep us all connected and with a sense of being together and locating our prayers in this place. If we don't have your email, please let us have it. And we'll also, in the upcoming weeks, be going live with a new and updated website that will enable us to do more things to keep us connected to one another. Your leadership, along with all of you, will continue to seek out ways to care for one another and for our world in our time apart and to encourage one another to keep the faith, to keep heart, and to keep praying. I would like to close with a prayer today from a great teacher of the spiritual life and from one of the great teachers of prayer, Teresa of Avila, and it's called Teresa's Bookmark. Let nothing disturb you, let nothing upset you, Everything changes. God alone is unchanging. With patience, all things are possible. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone is enough. Amen. Wherever you are, as you are able, please stand, and together let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our worship continues with the prayers, beginning with the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Prayers of the people today are form four. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Today in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Ireland. In the cathedral cycle of prayer, we remember St. Simon's on the Sound, Episcopal Church, Fort Walton Beach. In the ecumenical cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia, and Franklin Street Baptist Church, Mobile. We pray also for Michael, our presiding bishop, Russell, our bishop, Beverly, our priest, Lydia and Mike, our interns, and for all ministers in the church. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in our truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Donald, our president, Kay, our governor, Sandy, our mayor, and for all those who lead and hold authority in the nations of our world. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we give thanks for the birth of Anne Hamilton Gordon, uh, Golden, daughter of Adrian and Louis Golden. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the parish cycle of prayer, we remember those on the cathedral prayer list. Today we pray especially for Patty Beal, Happy Henson, Virginia Wilkins, Alec Armbrick, Megan Drain, Marilyn Cruz, Laura Shearer, Chuck McKay, Beth Schramm, Jane Whitespunner, Lucky Whitespunner, Jesse Coker, Mike Gibson, Leroy Roberson, Bradley Forster, Bill Stafford, Ed Stevens, Donna Moray, Gay Formanek, Mimi Hudson, Sue Epley, Bill Christian, Francis Fuller, Susanna Israel, and all others on the cathedral prayer list. 
And in the prison ministry cycle of prayer, we pray for the Northwest Florida Reception Center and Annex, Chipman. We also remember in our prayers those serving in the armed forces of our country, and especially those on the Cathedral Military Prayer List. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we pray for the repose of the soul of Norman Farr. The flowers on the altar are given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Chadwick Burton Clark and Catherine Campbell Thurber. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Please stand as you are able wherever you are and beloved, please know that the peace of the Lord is always with you. Also Not exactly a rowdy passing peace in here, I'll tell you that. Grace and peace to you all on this Lord's Day and this season of Easter. Just a couple of announcements today to reinforce a few things that I mentioned in the sermon. If you would like to be on our email list, which will give you the link to all of our live streaming and also links to archives of those, and we'll also give you our daily prayer and meditation and other announcements that come out from us, Please do email Christ Church Cathedral. Uh, if you have Carol Jeffers email, you may email her directly and she will add you to our list. Also, as I mentioned, we will be going live just one or two pages at a time with a new and enhanced website. So please be on the lookout for that. We will send you some information about it as it comes. And that will be another way for us to remain connected together, to share some pictures with each other, uh, to share our prayers, and to have ongoing life in those places where we find our lives going on right now. I love you, and I miss you, and I hope to see you soon. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to Almighty God.
In this time apart, we are no longer able to gather at the Lord's table together, which is what we would usually do at this point in our worship. And yet we continue to nourish the desire to gather at that table, to remember it in our prayers, and to continually hold it in front of us as a foundational part of our hope. And so in order to continue to feed that need, we will pray together in the prayer that is included in your service booklet. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you always. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. 